Hey writers, have you ever watched a pro athlete, maybe like a pro soccer player or a pro gymnast and you were watching them and you thought to yourself, I'm going to try to do that. And then you went out to your backyard and you grabbed a soccer ball and you tried to practice that skill or you got out a gymnastics mat and you tried to point your toes a little bit straighter. When you study what a great athlete does and then try that same thing yourself, you're doing something that writers do all the time. Writers read book after book written by other authors, not themselves, and they say, oh my goodness, he just did something so special in his book and I wanna try that in my book too. And then, you know what they do? go off and they try it. We're gonna do that today, writers. We're gonna study a writer, George McClemens, and try out some ways that he writes. So do you remember the first time you heard me read Night of the Veggie Monster? I bet some of you thought, I wish I could write like that. Well, give yourselves a big pat on the back Stand up, take a bow, because yes, indeed, you all have done this. You have written incredible small moment stories, just like George McClement's story, Night of the Veggie Monster. Here's the thing. There is so much more to learn, though. We can always grow. We can always improve ourselves as writers. So we can't just stop and say, I'm done. Things are good. Remember, when you're done, you've just begun. So today's lesson is going to be a little bit different. Instead of Mrs. Miller being your teacher, George McClements is going to be the teacher. So let's answer the question, what does George McClements do in Night of the Veggie Monster that is so special? And then tomorrow or in the future, during writing times, we'll be able to try some of what George McClemens does in our own stories. So as I read right now, I want you to watch and I want you to notice what exactly George has done that makes this one small moment, this ordinary moment in his day, so special. Okay, I'm going to get started. Night of the Veggie Monster. Something terrible happens every Tuesday night. It's not the pork chops or the mashed potatoes. It all starts when I'm forced to eat. Wow. See how George changed how we read this? And he got us excited by putting these three little dots here. Do you guys see those dots? George, you know, he could have just written, it all starts when I'm forced to eat peas. Yeah, he could have written that. But instead, he wrote those dots. Writers call these dots ellipses. Say that with me, ellipses. To tell us to wait a few seconds before we continue to read. It's like he's telling us, hey, reader, listen up. Here comes a really important part. So what did George do right here? George wrote ellipses in the middle of the sentence. What did George do? Wrote ellipses in the middle of a sentence. And why did he do that? To build excitement, to get us excited to continue to read. Okay, let's do that right now. Let's continue to read. Time for another fun-filled hour. Peas! A whole three tonight. 
My parents act as if I'm making it all up, but I'm not. I wonder how soon before he starts. Okay, it should be any minute now, his mom said. They have no idea what one tiny pea does to me. I love this picture. One tiny pea that he has to eat. With the slightest touch. Slightest touch. It begins. And we're off. My fingers become all wiggly. Ah, uh, I knew he would start with the fingers. As the pea rests in my mouth, my eyes begin to water. My toes twist and curl up in my shoes. That's a new one. I squirm in my seat. I try to keep control, but the pea is too strong. I start to transform into... Okay, boys and girls, here is something else that George did. He wrote the exact actions the little boy took with his body. The boy's toes twist and curl up in his shoes. And you know what he does? He squirms in his seat. These are really great words to describe exactly what is going on with that little boy. George could have written, my body doesn't like it when I eat a pea. But we know that that just would not have had the same effect. All those exact actions George wrote really pull me into this story. And you know what they do? They help me make a movie in my mind. I can visualize it. So here's another thing that George has done, another craft move that he has done to help us. What did George do? He wrote exact actions that people do. I'm gonna jot some of those actions down. Oh, here's one right, right here. He, they squirm. That's an exact action. And his toes curl up. Curl up. That's another exact action that he wrote. And why did he do that? He did that so that we, the reader, could make a movie in our mind. Boys and girls, I don't know about you, but I'm excited today to go off and try these two things in my writing. I wanna see if there's a spot where I can build excitement by putting an ellipse in. Remember, an ellipse is those one, two, three little dots. And I wanna get my readers to make movies in their minds, just the way George made me do that. So I need to make sure I use exact action words like squirm and curl up. Okay, writers, you have a big job to do today. You are going to go off and you are going to try to write in the ways that George McClemens writes. I cannot wait to read your stories. Off you go.